Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. And uh, thanks for the people who've answered the poll question so far. So um, uh, I appreciate you giving up your time for today and thanks for joining us. I'm sure you're all busy with uh, end of financial year, but we really appreciate it. Um, revenue planning is something we're really looking forward to talking to you about. Um, it certainly can add a lot of value to your business and to your organization, but quite often it can be too complex. So when things are complex and they just don't get done. So if you don't have the right processes, if you haven't got your people engaged and if you don't have the right tool to make it simple, then um, it's going to be a difficult thing for you to, to complete and get the, the full value out of. So we're going to um, hopefully share some tips and tricks around how, um, uh, how you can simplify it and how you can start either improving what you're already doing um, or start doing revenue planning within your organisation. Um, this is actually the fifth webinar that we've been running in a series. So if you, uh, you can see that we've, we've covered a, a range of interesting topics previously. Uh, and if you want to go back and explore those, we've um, just launched our YouTube channel. Um, I'll share the link to that afterwards, but you can go and view all the videos from, from our previous webinars. Um, if you've got some ideas on, on what you'd like to see in the future, there's a, a chat box that you can see down the, down the bottom of your screen. Feel free to um, throw some ideas in there and um, we'll be sure to have a look at that afterwards. Um, I'm just going to go just a quick overview of ourselves and, and then introduce the agenda for today. So at Forest Grove, we've um, been working with finance teams and helping finance teams for 16 years to improve their financial uh, reporting, planning, budgeting and analysis. Um, we've worked with a whole range of businesses and industries right across Australia, Australia and New Zealand. So we've been able to pick up a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge of how these different organisations operate. Um, and we're going to be able to share some of those learnings with you today. Um, joining me on today's webinar is, is uh, Matt and Shaq. Uh, Matt is our delivery manager. He's been working with Forest Grove for 10 years now. Uh, worked with a whole range of customers and um, different businesses and, and government organisations. He's going to really focus on uh, how you can engage your people, um, how you can build a, a good sort of process for uh, implementing revenue planning. Shaq, he's a qualified CPA. Uh, prior to joining Forest Grove, he spent eight years in a management accounting role. And he's going to take you into a hands-on demonstration of Profix, which is the, the main tool that we use, and uh, really demonstrate how the right tool can simplify the whole process and just make it a lot quicker, as well as helping you to engage um, the different aspects of your organisation. Um, we think uh, interacting is a is a really good way to get the most out of it today. So if you if you can interact, if you can engage, you're going to learn a lot more and you're going to enjoy yourselves a lot more along the way. So the first thing is um, we're running a poll, which a number of people have already uh, given us a response to. So we'll get back to the answers um, on that later on in the webinar. But if you haven't done so, um, just go uh, have a quick look and, and send your answers through. Um, there's also a Q&A section, which you'll be able to see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, I'll be monitoring that throughout the webinar. So if there's some questions come up, I'll, I'll respond. Otherwise, we'll leave them to the, the live Q&A at the end of the session. Uh, and we already have some of your questions from when you registered. So we'll be addressing some of those. Uh, the other one is that there is a chat box. So if you want to, the other panelists or any of the other attendees, feel free just to throw in who you are, where you're from, add some input on the slides, um, whatever you feel like, the, the more you put into it, the, the more everyone will get out of it. Um, and just lastly, uh, we are recording the session, so um, we'll make that available to you and email that to you after today. Um, so the agenda for today, uh, Matt is gonna start off with um, <clears throat> taking you through what is revenue planning, what are some of the common challenges that businesses face um, and how, um, how you can move on from Excel? Because as we all know, Excel is generally where these types of things start and um, they just grow and get to the point where it becomes unmanageable. So how you can make that transition. Uh, and then Shaq will come in and take you through that hands-on demonstration of how a, a specialist tool can really make it simplified and help you engage um, the different parts of your business. Uh, and then we'll get back to the live Q&A. Um, so with that, I'd just like to hand you over to Matt for uh, the first part of the webinar. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks for that great introduction, Jesse. Turn on the slide, 
There we go. Um, welcome everyone. Thanks for taking the time to attend today. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about effective revenue planning. It's often overlooked in favor of the more flashy rolling forecasts, cash flow, visualization webinars, but it can really add a lot of value to your business. And if it's done well, it might actually give you some competitive advantage over those that don't do it so well and aren't putting as much focus in it. The revenue planning approach may be specific to your industry. I can see some of the people on this session are involved in professional services, aged care, government, um, some are in manufacturing. There's a fair amount of crossover, but today we're going to keep it pretty general as we talk about revenue planning and how we can improve the process. I'm going to take you through the benefits to your business, the challenges, and how you can simplify your revenue planning, align it with your strategic plan, and gain visibility of your key product lines or divisions. So why is revenue planning important and what are the benefits? Well, the three key advantages for doing this are direction, management, and strategy. Direction, it allows you to see where you've come from and see where you're going. Uh, the most obvious reason for that is so that you can see how much money is coming into your business and see ensuring that you can cover your costs and stay in business, driving the business forward with a secure financial future. The next one is management. Effective and dynamic revenue planning helps you plan effectively, make strong and decisive decisions. This is not possible without actionable insights. Identifying the profitability of individual products, regions, salesperson will allow you to make clear decisions, knowing the impact of reallocating services, materials, or resources to improve your company's performance. But the key reason here is strategy. Ensuring that your business is aligned with your strategic objectives can be difficult. Do we know, do we have the cash flow to invest in a new product line or build a new aged care home? How much market share are we aiming for and how are we measuring if we're successful in getting that market share? Effective revenue planning can ensure that your corporate goals and directions are achieved. So these are the advantages. And so why isn't everyone doing it and doing it well? Well, there's a couple of challenges that we have here with revenue planning. And the first one is data integration. Data is often siloed in point of sale systems, inventory systems, ERPs, and of course, the ever present Excel sheet. Getting this data together fast enough to analyze the trends and look forward can be a big challenge. The next one is consolidating that data. Sure, you're budgeting by region, by salesperson, by SKU. It's great to begin with and when you're getting those numbers together, but when you start trying to map this to GL accounts and cost centers, it becomes a big exercise in itself. And you start to lose some of that flexibility that you want in a revenue plan. What effect does switching raw materials to a separate product line give you? Adding SKUs requires additional mapping and logic and calculations. And what's supposed to be a dynamic and agile process becomes rigid and slow. So how do you know if your revenue plan is correct? When you start a business, it can be pretty simple. You might have a few products. Um, you might have one contract with a customer. They tell you how much they want and how much they're willing to pay for it when they want it. Um, and that's all you need really to start planning for revenue. But then as a the company gets bigger, you start to add product lines. You bring salespeople on board, manufacturing and inventory controls. It becomes difficult to budget exactly how much revenue is coming in and when. Doing that analysis becomes difficult. Your salespeople are telling you one thing, your manufacturing are telling you another, procurement has another story to tell, each has their own data sources and might not even talk to the other teams in this planning process. So you start to put some real planning and process behind it. So this is what a process might look like when once you start to put, put it all, map it all out as a process. You get the historical data from your different data sources for trend analysis, you send it to your sales team. They predict how much uh, the predict they they put their pricing and sales estimates into the plan. They send it to the manufacturing team, who looks at the projections, the inventory on hand, and suggests some prices are raised because we don't have the raw materials to sell how much they're forecasting, and perhaps lowering the price of others where we have additional inventory on hand. Then they send it back to the sales team to make sure they have. Uh, make sure they can have another go. You have to say this is cut to so that you can see what the differences are between these saves. And once we do all this and the back and forth is done, we finally send it to the board or we send it to the management team for approval and they might send it back and want even more um, information added to it. So now that we've defined this process, we're halfway there, right? Well, there's a lot of pain points in this process. Getting the data from source systems or ERPs, you know, doing the scenario analysis, monitoring the process, seeing if the salespeople or the manufacturing team have the sheet that they're working on, mapping it to the GL accounts, as I said, these are all really big pain points in this, in this process. There's also the time that it's taken to do all this. 
which I think is probably the biggest problem when it comes to effective revenue planning. There's also the, the problem, the challenges with Excel. Excel, I often think, is the best and worst thing to come into many businesses. This process in Excel, we generally have a bunch of sum ifs, you know, to figure out by type, by salesperson. We've also got sum ifs and pivot tables to try and get it into our GL lines. We've got naming conventions that are really horrible ones like this version 5.11 versus 5.11 underscore map, which is the most relevant one. Um, you know, all these naming conventions, scenario planning, version control, logic errors, they all become problematic when we try and do this long process in Excel. Then, of course, your Excel sheet gets so big, you start saying this. So how do we simplify the process? We get the right tools. Uh, Excel probably isn't it. If you're watching this webinar, you're probably on the right track and you probably understand that we're going to talk to you about profits as using this. Automate the source systems whenever possible. ERP, inventory sales, and source systems should seamlessly work into your revenue plan. Things like market information or benchmarking information is available. Incorporate these into your models before you even begin. Really define your process. Ensure a logical flow of information. Ensure the right people are getting their hands on it, and that's who entering it, who is entering it can be tracked. Avoid the back and forth emails with a defined process that straight away sends it to the next person in the chain. I really love workflow and profits for this, seeing who has entered it, who is taking a long time to enter it, and who is entering it wrong. It allows you to instantly cut away versions and resend it out for inputs by one or more users. And then you can really refine this process. Make it a really dynamic process, continue to look for ways you can improve the accuracy and simplify. And then use driver-based planning and ensure that the drivers are valid. Ensure you can measure against your drivers. If you're budgeting right down to the SKU level, that's fine, but use those as drivers for your cost of goods sold. Where applicable, use trend analysis and market information as further drivers to account for seasonality and take some of the guesswork out of it. A little while ago, we did a white paper, um, and it's one of my favorites. It's on AHG, they're one of our clients. They have, uh, in terms of revenue planning, they had an ag aggressive acquisition strategy and they went from 11 dealerships to over 100. So forecasting how much revenue they were going to get from those dealerships became really difficult. Andrew Chilcott was the head of management accounting. He quickly found that they were hitting all of these challenges that I've mentioned uh, when they were doing this revenue planning. Dealerships had their own data sets. There was no flexible reporting, tracking which was the most up-to-date workbook and where each dealership was in the process and consolidating the data was a really long and lengthy process. It wasn't leaving any time for analysis. So how did they get right? Andrew and John Boland, the financial controller, first looked at the process to determine the pain points and how the process should run. They determined that the sales team needed to forecast the expected car sales, and to do this, they needed historic detail, how much they were selling in the past. The dealer principals had to be able to approve this as they were ultimately responsible, and this then had to be sent to the leadership team to make strategic adjustments. And it has to, had to be able to be restarted at any time. If there was something that changed, if a, a, a product line or a car type wasn't available, they had to be able to redo their whole forecast, their whole revenue plan. So the first thing they did was they used profits to centralize the reporting. They used it as a single source of truth and it meant they had a much better handle on the current state of the business, an important starting point when doing the revenue planning. Andrew, with support from John, then set expectations within the business. Sales forecasts had to be completed every month. Training was provided as soon as, soon as new sales people came on board and this submit had to be submitted and approved by the principal as they were ultimately responsible for it. They then used Profits Collaborative tools to send out driver-based budgeting templates out to each salesperson at each dealership, have them approved and instantly consolidated. This gave them time for analysis of the numbers, ensuring that they're in line with their strategic objectives. Profits' flexibility, functionality and scalability enabled the revenue planning process to grow with ASG as they acquired additional dealerships and assist with the consolidation of multiple cost centers, providing a holistic view of the business. This, this was a huge success, and they kept acquiring dealerships without having to add additional finance staff, which was a really big win for them. It meant that they could still be you know, as dynamic as they had been. It really gave them a robust process that they could have consistent data to allow cross-business or cross-dealership comparisons, a flexible, scalable, and self-sufficient solution that the finance team could manage, reduced end of month forecasting process time, and a really lean finance unit that could focus on strategy, not focusing on collecting on that finance.
It's a really good result for them and it's why it's, it's one of my favorite uh, white papers. So we've got a poll up. Um, most of you have entered it. Um, I can see that a lot of people are doing it in Excel. Um, so it seems like a really good opportunity. Obviously you're hitting some of these pain points and that's hopefully why you're looking at this session today. So it's good to know that you're already starting to think about the process and, and, and you're not just coming in from, a, from nowhere. Um, so yeah, 80% of people have said they're doing it already with Excel. Um, no one said they're doing it with another tool, which is good. So you're not, probably not getting some of those benefits that a tool might um, give you. So next Shaq is gonna take us through how you can really make an easy, uh, make this really easy with profits and how you can really simplify the process. So I'll leave it to you, Shaq. Thanks, Matt. So today, we're gonna highlight some of the functionality that already exists um, within Profix to help simplify the revenue planning process within your organization. In streamlining the process, we'll also align budgeted targets with organizational goals through increased clarity in reporting, as well as gain insight through benchmarking as to how the business is performing relative to industry averages or standards of best practice. Now, in order to help streamline this process in the presentation today, I'll be using a driver-based input template that will assist with calculating the revenue amounts and the postings of these results to the GL. We'll also be using a driver-based revenue model with metrics or drivers that operational end users are more familiar with in their day-to-day -day running of the business. This will also enhance organizational buy-in as opposed to merely entering dollars, uh, into entering dollars into GL codes. Now, reports comparing budgeted drivers to actual drivers, as well as monitoring budgeted actual performances to industry benchmarks, will also help to align budgeted targets with organizational goals. Our business case for demonstration today centers around a technology business that generates revenue by consolidating the revenue planning process by simplifying the end user experience and easy to input driver based revenue template. We'll also be improving clarity and reporting by comparing budgeted drivers with actuals throughout the year, as well as comparing the outcomes with industry benchmarks. Now logging into Profix, we are now looking at the dashboard on the web client. And the web client basically works with any modern web browser, so Chrome, Firefox, or Edge, it's perfectly fine. So we can see we're logged in, I'm logged in here as Tony Stark. Uh, we've got the dashboard here, and we can see my tasks on the left-hand side. Um, and these are assigned by the administrator and distributed by your workflow manager, which we'll touch on uh, briefly after this. We've got my favorite reports. Uh, these are reports that you can easily bookmark and have ready on your uh, favorites in your dashboard, ready to go for you to view during the course of the month or after a period month end or after a period end or reporting in uh, month end. And you've also got some badges here with metrics that would matter. Uh, for in this case, we've got gross margin, uh, operational expenses, and this can be uh, configured by your administrator, whatever is relevant for you and your business. And you can see at the bottom here, we've got a Power BI in embed. Um, so everything that you see here is configurable by your administrator um, so, so that you can put the badges and tasks that, that matter most. Now, in streamlining the revenue planning process and enhancing organizational buy in, workflow manager within Profix is often the best place to begin. The revenue planning process. It allows for transparency throughout the budgeting and forecasting process and works well in allocating templates and collating them for approval once submitted by the end user. So here's a sample workflow of a simple revenue plan. So we have the start, the budget preparation or forecast preparation, the revenue planning kickstart process, population and distribution of the, uh, distribution and population of the templates rather, the submission of the two templates will then be followed up by an approval um, by the relevant um, senior management or board. Now we can see that the tiles here in workflow will sort of tell you where um, the process is at. The green tiles with the white ticks are basically uh, activities or tasks that have been completed. And the blue tiles with the white circular arrow hits are basically tasks that are in progress. The dark blue tiles with the white tree, di tree diagrams are basically tasks that have yet to be done. To, uh, get to begin rather. So workflow manager enables the ease of distribution of driver-based templates for population and allows for flexibility in the type of template distributed as well. 
So we've got two revenue templates here that we'll go through. We'll see a driver-based template designed in Profix's template studio, as well as another driver-based template designed in using Detail Planning Manager. So now we're gonna move into the dashboard. And you can see that those tasks were assigned by workflow and they appear here on my task. So we're gonna click on the first one that says revenue planning by customer. And basically what this is, is, is a template that's in data entry mode. You can see from the left-hand side, you've got pages which basically list the dimensions or rather the type of customers that uh, apply to this particular end user. Uh, there's a drop-down list here that shows the list of customers. We can minimize this so that we get a better view of the template. We've got the title of the template, the name of the sales manager, as well as the customer here at the top. We've got the different products that the customer buys. We've got time running across the page, a total column and actual column from the previous financial year, any variances and comments that can be input by the end user. So now we can see here that we've got three lines in each product. So that's quantity, average selling price and product revenue. Quantity and average selling price are driver accounts and the product revenue is effectively the general ledger. So we've combined different types of accounts in this template to help the end, to help the end users to make it easy for them to populate and plan their revenue. We brought in data figures from the previous financial year with the help of a process within profits. And basically the end user now, all the end user has to do is they can take advantage of this and if they wanted to increase the quantity, it could be as simple as if they wanted to uplift everything by 5%, they could highlight everything, right click, select the option to go adjust data, they can click that and increase that by say 10%. And that instantly has uplifted those values, those quantities. Now, because the product revenue is related to a GL and that is gonna get pushed, um, and that basically now has a formula, and we can see that the quantity multiplied by the average selling price will give us the product revenue. And if we wanted to say discount the average selling price, we could just click on that, again, adjust data and reduce that say by 5%. and that flows through. The chart below is dynamic um, and will change as you change your inputs in quantity and average selling price. So this is a template that's driver-based effectively and it helps you bottom up by video. Once it's approved, the end user can just hit workflow and submit or even attach comments. Um, and you don't have to worry about multiple templates going up to multiple people because as long as everything's done in profits, there's only one version of the truth. So again, a really powerful profit sub to really manage this entire process, especially if you've got multiple divisions or sales managers. Now, the second template that I wanted to show you was actually a, it's actually a detailed planning manager scheduling profits. Now that is a module within profits that helps you plan at a greater level of detail. So we're gonna select revenue planning by widgets and consulting, and we can click on this, and this is what it will appear as. So you've got your name, in this place, we've, uh, in this instance, we've configured everything to go is to show the name of the customer, the revenue location, so where the customer is based at, the start and end period, which we grayed out because we don't want the end user to interfere with that. They don't need to input anything into there. It's for the upcoming financial year. We've got the type of revenue, and we've given them the option of widgets and consulting as per our business case mentioned earlier. We've got columns showing the number of consulting hours, consulting hourly rate, the number of widgets, and the widget prices and the total revenue right at the end. And how we've configured the template is that it's basically we made it very flexible and robust simply by going type of revenue. We can actually select whether we want it to be consulting or widgets. In this case, we've selected widgets. And you can see here that the consulting hour, number of consulting hours as well as consulting hourly rates has been grayed out. Now we can see number of widgets and widget prices isn't grayed out. And this is where the end user can put their inputs in. So say we wanted to do 600 units instead of 500, and maybe not at a retail discount, but we're gonna, we were gonna do it at an introductory pricing, for example. These are options that we've configured in the background. So the end user, so the end user just really needs to select a rate, the number of widgets that they think they'll sell to the customer and the prices that they wanna sell it at. And we can go actions at the top here and hit calculate. And that has changed from 261 to 264. And we can actually see that that's changed into a revenue column. Now, if I were to select, say, consulting hours, for example, and we didn't want to do widgets, but we wanted to do consulting hours. The moment I select that option and bring that across, it automatically grays out the widgets. So you don't get the end user making a mistake accidentally by inputting into sales that it shouldn't. And it's really done um, as simple and it's as easy as selecting an option from a drop-down list effectively. 
Now they can then go and input consulting hours. And you can put the consulting hourly rate as an option. And basically it would be either the associate consultant rate or the senior consultant rate. And in this case, we'll do the associate consultant rate. And we hit actions, calculate, and that changed from 264,000 to 24,000. So it's really dynamic and robust. And what's interesting about this template as well is you know that there's three sort of, um, it's a template that's done by customer, revenue location, and type of revenue. So you've got three types of drivers in combination working in one schedule. And the scalability um, in, uh, that Profix allows is that once this template is configured a certain way, you can go to different uh, divisions or different sales managers. And as long as they input this data in and submit it via Profix in, using workflow, it automatically gets collated within Profix. So you don't have the arduous task of actually having to go through uh, multiple spreadsheets, trying to determine which version is the latest version and sort of adding those uh, sheets together, the data on those sheets together. So really flexible and robust. And you'll notice that by selecting either consulting or hours or widgets, we're using like the if and or functions and, and sort of making sure that the end user doesn't have the error, um, uh, doesn't create an error by inputting into a cell he or she shouldn't be doing. And it's, it's just as easy to add a new line. Uh, we can just populate, uh, we can just select a, a blank row here and then just input a, a new customer and add it to the list if, it, if there's something missing. And everything here can also be pre-populated and uploaded, uh, connected to a data source and profits. So it's really flexible and robust um, and gives you great granularity if required in your revenue planning. I just wanna draw your attention to line number four, which is phasing, because when we expand total revenue, We've configured this to spread it evenly, and evenly over 12 months. But you can see in the new customer, we wanted to phase in in the last third of the financial year. So we have, you see values that are zero across the first uh, eight months. And then the last four months of the year, we've got values in there. And again, you can configure this phasing quite easily using the detail planning manager option within profits. So again, very handy and it's a no code solution. It's all just uh, ticking boxes or selecting options from drop down list. So it's really easy to manage and very quickly, you can actually distribute these out and get them uh, using workflow manager and profits to appear on the dashboards uh, of end users and then getting them back again. Now, what we've gone through at this point is that we've shown two examples of driver-based templates that help calculate and populate the revenue GL, typical of bottom-up approaches to budgeting. We've shown how metrics, uh, using metrics that relate to non-finance personnel in building up the budgets as opposed to dollar inputs into the GL would help in engaging operational end users and achieve greater buying. We're now gonna look at how profits can assist with reporting and comparing budgeted or forecasted inputs into to industry benchmarks. After all, since the budgets were built up using drivers, it would make sense to report on how these drivers or KPIs compare against industry benchmarks. Now I can go back to dashboard here and select the benchmark report that I've got here. And we can straight away see that this is in report mode and it's got the options to sort of view by customer or by location. And uh, you can actually toggle in between that if you like. Um, so example, you can do all as this report has originally started with, or you can select a particular customer across all the different locations. And you can see that there's already months here whereby the, 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 there's a variance between the amounts budgeted. We've got quantity of widgets, product revenue, consulting hours, consulting revenue. And you can see these variances here at a glance using conditional formatting and the charts below to give you an idea of are we meeting or exceeding our industry benchmarks. So in summary, what we've basically shown you here today is that we've seen driver-based input templates that will assist you with calculating the revenue amounts and posting these amounts to the GL. The use of driver-based revenue model with metrics or drivers that operational end users are more familiar with in the day-to-day -day running of the business will also enhance organizational buy-in as to merely just entering amounts in a spreadsheet into a GL. And reports comparing budgeted drivers to actual drivers as well as monitoring the performances to industry benchmarks help to align budgeted targets with organizational goals. So with, with that, we've come to the end of our presentation. Uh, over to you, Jesse, for Q&A. Thanks, Jack. <clears throat> um, uh, it was, we've got a few questions that we've had come through previously. So I think, um, Matt, we might just start with this one. Um, so th this question, two parts. Um, how would you build an adaptable process um, and at what stage in the process should you get end users involved? 
Great question, Jesse. Um, two part question. So to build an adaptable process, really, you have to start building in Profix, we tend to build it with different scenarios and having different um, rules that can be applied and different drivers that can be applied to that. So by making it adaptive, you can keep cycling through adding a new scenario. If this, you know, seasonal seasonality occurs, then this is what will happen. And then if this seasonality occurs, this is what can happen. And then you can start to really adapt which one it's kind of trending towards and use that as your starting point for your next um, budget or forecast. Um, I really like having a kind of multiple scenarios that have been running at all times. So maybe a working two scenario and then a best case and worst case scenario. Um, so then you can keep managing to it, see how you're trending and making sure that you can still be a business even if the worst case occurs. When it comes to getting end users involved, I'd get them involved straight away. If you're a really large organization, get some really key SMEs that understand the business involved straight away, make sure that they can use the system, make it nice and easy for them and then add more and more users as you kind of get used to building it and as that's starting to work correctly. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Um, <clears throat> we've probably just got time for one more question. So Shaq, um, if you had to add or remove a revenue stream, how could you do that in a simple process? So um, you can just sort of continue rolling on with your revenue planning. Um, so really uh, once the models have been designed in, pro in, in profits, all they need to do is just select and add a new member. Um, so it's really, there's a, it's a no code solution. You just enter and just say, click the, uh, and add a new member and it's ready to go to be using the model. Okay. <clears throat> um, well, we're just sort of running out of time. So I think we'll start to wrap things up, but um, thanks everyone for, um, for your time today and for your questions. Um, just in summary, so we've gone through what is revenue planning, what were some of the key challenges, how you could move on from Excel and then giving you an example of, um, uh, I mean, from the poll, we can see that 80% of you are currently using Excel. So hopefully, um, just going through that Profix example, will say you um, thinking about how else you might be able to use a specialist tool and how that might make your life easier, how you can get some better results out of it and how it might be, um, allow you to sort of engage uh, you know, wider parts of the business um, and uh, get everyone sort of on board with this process. So um, if you want to, uh, find out more obviously um, you can go to our YouTube channel. I've sent through the link in the chat box um, But we're also the next webinar we're holding is uh, more of an in-depth demonstration of Profix So this will be really just focused on all the functionality of Profix um, You can register by that uh, bit.ly link there. So that's going to be happening on the 25th of 25th of June um, and that's where we'll take you through something that's a bit more in depth um, so it'd be great to see you guys there um, keep an eye out we'll be sending you some more um, emails and communications on the other topics that we'll have coming up in um, uh, in July um, so it'd be really great to see you guys to come along to the next one please check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hopefully we'll see you at the next demonstration thanks a lot thanks for your time today and um, enjoy the rest of your week